All right, guys. Now, moving along swiftly, we are getting to probably the more complicated and longest part of this form setup, and that is adding the item information. So that's going to be the images, the content, and all that fun stuff. We are going to go and crack on with that and add those fields right now before we get to the last step, which is going to be getting the contact person info. But let's get into this one right now and then move on. And now we're getting, getting all the classified title, the description, images the price and the location. The price, of course, only when it's for sale. So let's keep going with that. So let's go back to our site and open the settings. Now here in step three, we will be reusing these labels that we created so that the user is orientated and they know where they are. So we'll just come and drag these down and then we'll just give them an appropriate name. There we go. Okay, so I'll just go in and name this three one and then the next one same thing and the last one same thing so we've got that set up and now we can start adding the actual fields that we're going to be needing here now the first field we need is a title right for the item so we will say classified title simple as that now for the admin title we're going to say three two right and we don't need to add any type of conditional logic here because each one of these post types will have a title. So, and then we say classified underscore title for the field ID. That'll be an input. That's exactly what we want in there. And of course, when we come down, we're going to make this a required field and we'll leave the autocomplete on. And then as far as the layout goes, we'll just kind of put something, add a short title for your classified post there we go and we'll add the description in oh yeah placeholder text that's perfect that will and now the placeholder text sorry before i get ahead of myself is that text that's inside of the field that um tells the user kind of like what goes there so that's important to add um you don't want it all over the place though but in that situation it makes a lot of sense to have it in there and then description text, you know, you can just go ahead and say, okay. We can also add an icon to the input if we wanted to. Um, we're not going to do that, but it's entirely something you can do. It's a cool feature of the V form holder mapping options. This, of course, is going to be one of the standard taxonomies of field types in WordPress. And then all we select here is the post title. That's it. Simple enough. Now, like I mentioned, we're not doing anything special with this. No conditional logic is needed. So we'll just go ahead and save that. And we're ready for the next field once we've dragged this guy up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so next up is going to be the description of the item, right? So let's add another field. And then we're going to call this item description. And what all that really is, is going to be the post content. So 3-3 three, three, item description, that's fine. And we can also just go here, item description for the field ID. This is not going to be input because they're going to be able to add a lot more text here. So what we will do is put a text area, which is this field right here. And what it does, it puts in like kind of like a rich text editing box for you. And we're going to give users the, the WYSIWYG editor. That is the what, what you see is what you get editor. And you can even tell it, and well, you only want to give them eight lines or four lines or whatever you want on there. You put character limits and all that stuff. And we're going to make this a requirement for users and leave the rest of those options as is. Now on the layout options, oh, I am clicking too fast and furious. We're going to add a label position to the top again. And then we will put some placeholder text here that says, describe the item you are listing. There you go. And we can put a description and then we'll just say, enter a classified description. There we go. Mapping options, super simple. We're using just default uh, post fields. It's gonna be your post content. And again, no conditional logic or anything funny. We're just dealing with basic WordPress stuff here. So we'll go ahead and save that field in. Uh, we're making a lot of progress now, so I'm pretty stoked on our pace. I know this is a longer lesson, but it is so much valuable information because Divi Form Holder is a beast and it's easy to get lost in all the options, all the field types, all the form types and all the different stuff. So 
let's just keep rolling here. So next up, we want to add that featured image, the one that shows up when we have the archive loop module. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And we'll say main image is what we'll call this one. I'll copy that. And then this is going to be 3, 4, I believe. And we'll just call that main image. And then main underscore image right there. And the field type is going to be an image upload. Very easy. Now, you've got some options here as far as hiding upload previews, progress bars, all that fun stuff. We're going to roll with the defaults here. And we want to limit them to uploading only one file for this field. And then you can do stuff like changing the maximum upload file size and stuff like that. We're not going to deal with that, but I want to make you aware that that's there. And then also you can restrict the file formats that you're accepting. And there's a bunch of other labels that you can kind of work around with. We do want to make this a required field, of course, and that's going to be really it for that. Now, as far as the layout options go, there's some new stuff in here I want you to see it's that you can have an upload icon or you can not have an upload icon. That's entirely up to you. We will just use the icon style as the document. That's fine. We're going to put it on the left. And then you've got some animations that just kind of enriches the page a little bit that you can choose. We're going to put the label position at the top. We'll add some placeholder text. You know what, I'm not going to put anything there now, but maybe we'll add it later. We can decide. Um, we'll enable the description. Then we'll say, please upload your main image for the item. There we go. Mapping options. Again, those default post fields. And this one will be featured image. And again, no conditional logic or anything fun like that. We're just going to go ahead and save that field and lock it in. And now we're getting to some of our advanced custom fields. That's going to show you some new functionality. I just want to quickly drag these fields up before I forget to do so and then wonder where they are on the front end. So actually, I'll just drag it forward down. Cool. So let's take a look at our form here. So we've got our featured image in now. Now the next one is going to be the gallery. So the extra images we want to show. Let's go to our form here. Our field title will be item gallery. Oops. Item gallery. Oh, that is not how you spell gallery. There you go. Cool. And then the admin title is going to be three, five item gallery. There we go. And then again, the field ID, item underscore gallery. And again, we're going to use the image upload option. But now we'll change our max upload to four files. And again, you can put upload sizes, all that fun stuff, and restrict it just as you see fit. And I'm not going to make this one required because maybe somebody doesn't have four images, let's say, of an item. So we'll make this one optional, but we definitely want that main image. Now for layout options, I'll come down. We're using the icon. And, you know, I just want to show you that there are some other options here. You could do a custom upload image if you have one. But I'm just going to go ahead and select the camera this time. I'm going to keep the wobble and all that fun stuff. But I will put the label at the top. We'll add a description. And then we'll say, add some additional images of your item. There we go. And mapping. Now we get into different territory. We're going to go select ACF field. And then we're going to go ahead. And instead of selecting the individual images, we're going to be selecting the group of images. So gallery, there we go. And then again, we just go ahead and save that. And we're almost there. Two more fields for this. And this is the longest step in the entire form. So, uh, and probably for good reason, right? Because this is all the information people are going to see on it. So our next field is going to be price if the item is for sale. So let's go and just type in item price. We'll put an admin title of 36 item price, and we'll just put item underscore price, oopsie, price in there. This one we will keep as an input field, um, but we're gonna do something a little bit differently. And we're gonna say that we're only accepting numbers this time. So that way the user can't go type in a bunch of text or anything weird. It is just going to be like that. So 
we're not going to put any type of pattern. Um, it, it will give you um, that actually. So please use only numbers for the amount. There we go. So that'll be the error. So people kind of have a better idea of what they need to put in. And that is good. We'll make that required for when the item is for sale. And that is all we're going to do with that. And now we get to um, take a peek at the layout. So layout options, we're going to type here, enter your selling price. Oopsie. There we go. We'll add a description and we'll just say, how much are you asking for this item? Cool. We can enable an icon again, just to kind of show you, and I can just type in money here and we'll just use the money icon, why not? You can select the icon color, we'll go with our blue. You can select the font size, distance from the top, there's a lot of options there. But we're interested in the mapping now. And again, we will select our ACF field, we'll select our price field. And now we've got some conditional logic to work on because we don't want this to show on items that are not for sale, right? So we are going to be enabling this. And then we're going to go ahead and select the same thing. What type of classified are you submitting? We'll go ahead and just type for dash sale. And that'll be good for that. And one more field left, and then we get to go test this and take a look at what it looks like. And that's going to be our location field, right? So I'm going to drag this four down again and add a new field. And then we will just say item location. Now, if you wanted to, you could use conditional logic that for a lost and found post, maybe you might want to put, you know, last location you've seen the item or item found at location, that type of thing. We're going to keep this a little bit more generic, but I think you guys got the idea of the conditional logic. We've hammered it in by using a lot of examples with that. Okay, so 3-7 for this, and we'll just say it nice and conform with item location typed in there. And then field ID is going to be item underscore location. And now the type is going to be a regular input field. Again, but what we do differently, we say, is this a Google address field? And we're going to switch that to say yes. Now we won't be making this mandatory field because maybe somebody doesn't want to give their location because before they've kind of interacted with the person. There's a lot of creepy people out there, so let's avoid that. And we will take a look at the layout options. Now we'll just add a placeholder here that says enter the item location. And we'll add a description and we will just say map. And maybe we can, no, we won't put our input icon on that one. And then as far as the mapping goes, we're going to select our ACF field again. We'll click on the drop down and we'll select location, of course. And that's it. And we're done with the step. That is awesome stuff. So let me quickly save that. And let's go take a look at what's happening. Okay, exit the visual boulder. All right, we're going to go for sale. We're going to sell a bag. We are affirming that it's for sale, we'll go next. And the main thing I'm interested in is, okay, cool. So the price is showing up and my field's not showing for the map because I left it at the bottom. How terrible of me. So let's go back and drag that in there so that we can test that also. Open up my form settings, go all the way down, drag number four all the way to the bottom, save, go ahead and save this. And then we'll exit the visual builder. So let's try that again. For sale, next, select a house, that's for sale. All the fields that we know would be here. And now you just get to type your address and I will type in Lincoln Park, Chicago, Illinois. See, but it does that look up for you. So that's a really cool feature of Divi Form Builder and um, what's also enabled through Divi Machine. So that's really cool. So everything seems to be working fine so far. Now the last part we need to do is just add some contact info. That's our last step. And then we'll style it all up. And then we're all done with the add new post form and this extremely long message.